Meet the Peterson family. Our dad, the three Peterson brothers, and our families farm together in central Kansas. Our family farm started in 1882 and has been raising cattle and crops ever since. Please subscribe to this channel and give us a like and a comment if you enjoy the video. Raising that right up off of there. That's high enough. Okay, there's three walls out of four done. See, that's probably the side he's gonna catch them on. We'll put this side up anyway. Here come the heifers to come check it out. Oh, they probably think this pickup has some distillers for it for him. All right, it's ready for his heifers. He mainly will just need that one side, but if he needs overflow to catch first group and then catch them again on this side that'll work Crosby's testing it out he's in there somewhere all right let's get out here before they get out our open gate they even got my semi looked over and ready I'm gonna haul the first load today and I think try to buy again and my dad will bring the second load Pin seven heifers leaving the pin for the last time okay we are putting 60 on the first load about as nice as they went out of the pen, so that's good. Come on, bucko. Don't ruin it. And some heifers. Don't ruin it off the ship. And there's the steers. This heifer just seemed too light to sell. I don't know how she got with the bigs, but I kept her in a holding pen while I went to the Salem back. So I'm gonna put her back away, the heifer pen. And it's a good thing that I kept her home because the uh, heifers only weighed 751. And if I had to put her on, if she weighed, you know, enough below 740, then I could have pulled my average weight under 750, which I was hoping it was going to be more like 770. But I was able to see these ones sell online. Um, took a while to load out today, but they brought more uh, dollars per pound than either of our last two heifer sales did, but they weighed less, uh, so not as many dollars per head. But still pretty pleased with that. They brought within $4 a hundred weight of some other really, of another set of pretty much all black cattle that was off grass. So um, we, can, we can feed in the lot cheaper than uh, owning or renting grass. So I'm pretty happy that we can run them, feed them over the summer 
and sell them pretty close to grass price because I know we didn't pay within four dollars a hundred weight of what some grass cattle buyers uh, pay. So that means our profit margin is sitting right there pretty good. So she went right to drinking water there. Uh, she's in this pen of lighter heifers, you know, six and a half to seven twenty-five. They won't sell for a while. We've gotten rid of the majority of our big cattle. And we've bought back over 250 head now. Um, so we're, our average uh, our average size for our animal here went from having a lot of them that were over 800 pounds to now not very many over 750 pounds. But we are happy because all those sales went really well. Okay, we've got the pickup attachment. We have that sickle direct head sitting here. And we're taking all the heads out because the guy who bought the 5830 is taking the heads. Well, all the 5830 pieces are going. They're supposed to come pick it up tomorrow. It's going to be a sad day. Happy at the same time. Back to hauling water to the spring pairs again. Watering paddocks five and six with the tank placement this time. I let them drink it down a little bit. Now I'm topping it off for them. Just a partial pot load tonight. They split with a guy who was coming up to McPherson. So we took a half a pot load and they took half a pot load. Got them unloaded. There's the new calves, 23 of them. We'll have to work them in the next couple days. As for now, they're getting water and my dad's about to feed them. And the light heifers that I bought are actually in the new pen. So you can see they're gonna line up here for my dad's ration. Got a couple to treat this morning. This one is limping. All right, so I'm gonna give it an antibiotic for helping with that. Well, we didn't have this set up for more than a few hours and uh, Bruce got his cattle caught. So we are gonna tear it down and move it to the next pasture we're gonna need it at. You can see the heifers have been in there, Trump and everything up. Um, just gotta swing in the gates and get hooked on. See how long it takes us. Okay, we're wrapped down here. Okay, we got the straps on. Got all the wings folded in. Now getting the jack to go up. There you go. Bye, 58.30, we'll miss ya. But you're a good cutter. Oh, you can't even see it. There we go. Can't get a picture of dad with it. There she goes. Headed to the loading dock. Bye, Cutter. Right off into the sunset. Be a good machine for them. Okay, Ron's here to grind. My dad's placing bales. He he requested the help of Nathan to get a few more bales put down here. So we're double, double teaming with these tractors right now. Hauling up some bales to grind. There's the grinder. Well, you can kind of see it. Actually, Dad and I are both hauling up bales because uh, we weren't exactly prepared, but the grinder man said he had time to do it, so he said we can make it happen. So I'm, it's a relay because I'm setting them a couple places and then dad gets them and puts them in the order he wants them. We blend uh, millet and straw and alfalfa on one side and then the other side is for the, the younger cattle, alfalfa, millet, and brome. So just a little higher quality mix, but we mix it all together. I am on changing tire duty, so I gotta find the right one here. The stillers are here. They gotta dump around the corner now, since we're filling up the normal place with corn silage. 
All right, day three of chopping. We're back at it. We uh, had an issue with the with the air conditioner on this new chopper, so we took yesterday off. Uh, the mechanic worked on it, and it's it's back going, and uh, we should get most of our corn chopped today. We'll still have all of that uh, double crop forage sorghum, and I guess we have the one field of full season forage sorghum. Um, so we've still got some chopping left, but this first round should be done either today or tomorrow. We also might go piece around some on my field. I've got a few spots that aren't gonna make grain because it's too dry, and so we might go chop some of that too. So you'll notice we leave strips in the cornfields. That is for uh, crop insurance. The crop insurance adjuster will come out and look at those strips and appraise uh, what the field would have made based on the strips. So we're required to leave those um, just so they can get an appraisal. And uh, if, if the appraisal is low enough, we'll get some crop insurance money um, as well as the silage we harvest. Okay, um, we are gonna bring the length out of this trench a little bit like normal. So I'm bringing another straw bale down couple on that side well, I'm waiting on, on a truck but uh, there's actually an impressive size ears on this corn this is what we planted into uh, the cover crop that we we grazed the cows on last fall so we tried not to overgraze this one we had to leave them on the other field a little longer but uh, this is rushing along you can see you know, we're not even to half milk line. It's only like a fourth starch or whatever, but you can see the leaves are dying so fast. That's what we run into around here is this corn runs out of moisture and just starts dying so fast you gotta chop it. But it'll make really nice silage. That's also why we don't worry as much about having a kernel processor because uh, the corn's a little immature anyways, so, you know, the, the cattle will be able to digest most of that. It's really hard to tell what this would make to if we picked it. We will pick some not of this field. We'll chop all of this field, but because the potential is here, the ear count is here here for like 125, 130 bushel corn, which would be pretty good dry land corn for us. But it's uh, not going to put on any test weight. It's just shrinking back, so it's hard to know if this would make. 90 I don't know it's just hard to tell unfortunately Greg's field is what we were gonna pick and another field over farther away and that of course this was the year usually it rains more over by Lindsburg and then when we plant corn over there it's rained less over by Lindsburg we have a crop it's better than no crop okay there goes the last load off of Miller 2 we are gonna head to Lindsborg chop a field that's supposed to be picked but it's got some dry spots. Okay, Greg's field has a few spots, some spots that aren't going to yield any grain. So we can use them for silage. All right, so we're over at my house now, my corn field. Most of my corn looks pretty decent. Um, it caught one more rain than the home place did, uh, but it also missed a few that the home place did. Um, but as you can see, there's there's some spots that look like this. And then there's some spots that are going to be over 100 bushel an acre. And so we're trying to kind of piece around and chop what's, I mean, some of this is going to be zero. Some of it's going to be maybe 40 to 60. Anything below 60, um, you know, I figure is worth chopping versus combining and and maybe even 40. But it's kind of hard uh, with, with how variable this field is. It's kind of hard to avoid chopping the 60, 80 bushel stuff. Um, if you're trying to get the 40 bushel or less stuff. And so I'm just, I've been walking around. Uh, we're, we're 12 miles from the, the feedlot, so it takes a while for the trucks to get back. Um, so I, I have time in between the three trucks to, uh, you know, come survey and find where the bad spots are. I also, I flew my drone up this morning and was kind of checking. So I kind of, have a rough, I have a rough guess of where to chop based on what my drone saw, um, but I like to, you know, verify with my own eyes 
where to chop. So with the, with a the drought, things get complicated. You know, things don't go as planned. We did not plan to chop any of the silage over here. This was all supposed to be grain corn, but where, we're, where we are right now is on a little bit of a knoll. It's a little bit thinner soil. Uh, whereas if you get closer to my house, a uh, lot better soil and uh, it, it looks great. It was able to hold on until I got this inch of rain here this past week. Uh, but this here is pretty much done. And so we're gonna chop it. The, the plant that doesn't make an ear of corn is still worth, you know, feeding the cattle. So that's what we're doing. I am here at the home place, home farm, where the side, where we're dumping the silage. And I can hear Greg and, and uh, the trucks all loud and clear from our Midland radios. And we are 12 miles away and they are loud and clear. aren't quite able to keep up. I mean, Evan, Evan gets a little more time to pack whenever we're hauling from 12 miles away. Uh, aren't able to quite keep up with a chopper with three trucks, but um, this is definitely the best use of that corn out there. The yard smells really good today. Some good corn silage going up there. Dad's feeding out his starter load pens. I gotta get my grower load going here. Crosby almost didn't believe me that we were taking this home instead of instead of that pickup, but I got him out. There you go, there's your seat, bud. Working cattle this morning. Um, 50, 53 head, I think it is, between my cattle I bought and the cattle we got from El Dorado. I want to take about half of these. We had a bull slip in there. Uh, mm -hmm. He's gonna go in this pen. The rest will be steers. Not a lot of roads left. We left this field and then we came back to finish it. And it's pretty dry stuff now. But it's just gonna be at this very front of the pile. I'm gonna steepen this up a little bit. I would think. They're chopping over there, so they're taking a shortcut across the field then they don't have to spin around in the yard and back up. They can just pull right over there and then back right up here and then shoot out and then take the road around that way. First chopper ride. That's a lot to take in, isn't it? She doesn't have to eat it. Why? You like being buried, Ada? <laughs> Who did we cover? Crosby. <laughs> He's actually staying. There you go. This trench covered. We moved one tarp over from the triticale and then we had a, a little piece left to put on the top. So we're not going to cover the whole thing because we got to put cane on the front of it. Cane silage. Okay, Evan ran the sweep around one time to clean up the little bit that's on the on the floor. There's, you know, two or three inches. 
and then I told him to just turn it off and we would, all you have to do is sweep these little, you know, three, four inches around the outside in, and then it'll pretty much sweep this whole floor totally clean. Then it'll be ready for the 2024 corn crop right around the corner. Okay, I got the cows, they're kind of interested. Got my distillers. I got my air equip healer. There's some of them going in there. This girl thinks she can just eat straight out the sidekick. I just took a few steps away. The last four trailed in there. Now I've got to get the gates closed without making too much noise. Got the healer closed on these. This first set of fall cows today. The stillers, the healer, and a sidekick is a powerful trifecta for catching cows. Nailed it. I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to catch these cows and just since I'm only loading about seven at a time, I'm just gonna try to do with no bud box, just straight into the alley. And I'm also gonna try to have um, Blair film it for you guys. Uh, she's taken pictures before, so she should be able to point the camera at me. See if we can uh, load these on the trailer. Okay, I'll tell I'll tell you again when to when to take the button. To push the red button again. On the trailer, girl. Are they all girls? They're all girls. Okay, since I'm here by myself, I use the slider gate. And since, so I got five, and I'm just gonna get up two or three more for the back. Because, because they have babies? Yeah, their tummies are big because they have babies. So we caught the first seven. Blair got a little bit of it on camera. Okay, one side made this wing smaller. They all decided it wasn't so bad to go in there. Thanks for watching everyone. Check out our music videos linked in the description. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Snapchat, and explore our website www.petersonfarmbrothers.com. See you guys next time.